Welcome back to I Teach You Science. This is going to be the next video in the cluster questions playlist. So this is about giant insects. Please share this video with your friends and your teacher so we can all study for this earth and space science test together. Here we go, giant insects. So it says base your answers to one through six on the information below and on your knowledge of earth and space science. I just wanna say this is gonna be a reading test, guys. You really gotta read everything. So you can't just get, that, get to that test and just skip around. If you want, sometimes it is a good strategy to go down and see what the first question is. So this is still tables and more reading. This is more charts and stuff. So we can look at the, the first question, or even you can, you can sort of read through all the questions in the cluster and then go back and read. So at least you kind of know what you're looking for. So question one says, how did the change in the continents lead to the change in atmospheric oxygen levels? Then we got complete an argument, something about why insects change the size, their size during the Carboniferous period, something about more CO2 or less CO2, something like that. Okay, we know we're looking for something like that. We've got more charge. Which statement correctly explains the changes to the insects' environments due to the movement of the plates? Looks like we're just interpreting an image there. We'll see. How does the change in position of the continents create feedback, resulting in the change of amount of oxygen? Okay, describe the evidence that supports this claim. Probably use the data table there. In your evaluation, consider how does the argument contribute to the explanation of the continual co-evolution of systems and life? What ideas doesn't this argument present? Okay, so I mean, like, I don't really know that much. Like, I'm looking at some of these and being like, oh, I don't know. But obviously, a lot of it's going to come from the readings. So let's see how it goes. So it says the Carboniferous period occurred during the Paleozoic era around 359 to 299 million years ago. So maybe when you start seeing this, we're going to want to look at our geologic time scale here. So it's saying we are in the Paleozoic era. So let's look at our errors here. See, Paleozoic. Look, we are here. And then specifically, 359 to 299 million years ago. So look, 359 to 299. So we're actually here. So there's our Carboniferous, see? I don't know if that's going to help us, but we'll see. There's vast swampy areas with variety of plants, including horsetails, ferns, and large trees. Okay. We got this nice little image there. During this time, gigantic insects flew around the trees and crawled amongst the ferns. Table 1 shows a comparison of two insects from the Carboniferous period compared to their modern-day relatives. Okay. So we could see the size difference in the Carboniferous compared to present day. So we could see, look, wingspan is two and a half feet compared to six inches. This is way bigger. We got this centipede thingy. Eight feet long. Glad that doesn't exist. Versus one foot long. Still really gross, but that's okay. Way bigger. What caused the insects to grow to such a size in the Carboniferous period, and why are they the size they are today? Plate tectonic activity during this period caused the continents to be arranged in such a way that much of the land was near the equator, okay, where conditions were optimal for the formation of tropical rainforests. The arrangement of the continents, as seen in the image, also includes large, shallow inland seas, which contributed to the formation of coastal swamps, okay? We have our positions so you could see right there the amount of oxygen also changed during this time so let's see so we could see look we're in this time period right the carboniferous so you could see there's an oxygen percent oxygen in the atmosphere is very high so we could say like just write little notes high percent oxygen in this time okay how did the change in the continents lead to the change in the atmospheric oxygen levels? Select the row that accurately describes the steps that led to the change. So, why would there be more oxygen? Well, it seems like it's the ra being near tropical rainforest. So it says, if the land was near the equator, there's more optimal trop formation tropical rainforest. If you have more plants, more oxygen is going to be produced. So if the plants are thriving, the oxygen level is going to go up. The reason that the plants are thriving, right, is because there is more rainforest. And the reason there's more rainforest is because of the temperature. 
And the reason the temperature is so hot is because the continents are near the equator. So that is the mindset you have to go. Okay, continents near the equator, high temperature, rainforest forms, that's more plants, so more oxygen. So there's your loop, right? And that's going to generate big creatures, probably. But let's see. Select the row that accurately describes this. Okay. The amount of plant life declined due to the movement of the continents. Automatically wrong. The movement of the continents created conditions for an abundance of plant life. Yes. The plants took in CO2 from the air and released oxygen, increasing the overall amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. That is right. As the continents moved, limestone was exposed to weathering, creating a large area of carbon capture. It didn't say anything about that. Uh, so that's out. Movement of the continents caused an abundance of plant life. Yes, the plants took in oxygen. No, they, plants don't take in oxygen. They take in carbon dioxide. So there you go. Row two. Row B. That was... that. If you can read, uh, you could definitely get this. But you did have to know about the plants, right? But it says releasing carbon dioxide. So you could probably could have eliminated that. I would say this is a 2 out of 10 in difficulty. That's pretty easy. Insects rely on a network of tiny tubes called trachea to deliver oxygen directly to their tissues. These trachea, trachea diffuse oxygen from the atmosphere into the insect's body. So they're taking the oxygen into the body. The larger the insect, the more challenging it is for the oxygen to reach, dis, de, to reach deep tissues effectively, efficiently. Okay, so we're saying now bigger equals Harder to take in oxygen. Okay. Insects undergo the process of cellular respiration to produce their energy. Cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondria of cells where glucose and oxygen are used to produce CO2 and ATP, the primary energy source. Complete this argument by selecting the appropriate word of phrase. So this is biology. I'm surprised that this is considered earth and space science, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. During the carboniferous period, the blank in the atmosphere allowed the insects to increase the intake of blank through their skin. Okay, so it's going to be something to do with oxygen. Yeah, so we're going three. Uh, first of all, like, that's the only one that says there's increasing oxygen in the Carboniferous period. This is so easy because the rest of them are wrong. We know the answer is three, but we'll keep going. Allow the insects to intake of, increase the intake of oxygen through their skin. This increased the rate of metabolism, which allowed the insects to produce more energy. And therefore, insects were able to increase in size. That, done. That, I mean, that was so easy. This is a one out of ten. Row three. Okay, great. Earth's tectonic plates are constantly moving at a rate of 0.6 inches per year. This shows the change in positions of the continent over a period of 55 million years. Okay. So we got late Carboniferous here, late Permian there. 306 million years ago, 255 million years ago. So we could see we're going that way. This is more recent. Which statement correctly explains the changes to the insects' environments due to the movement of the plate? So let's sort of see what changed here a little bit. So this is a sea, and then it turned into an ocean. Um, this North China kind of moved up. This whole area with the mountains moved north. Okay, let's just see what they say. The swampy coastland decreased because the amount of shallow coastal seas decreased. So the seas decreased. I mean, there's no more sea there. So technically that might be right. The mountainous regions along the equator increased. No, if anything, I mean, I don't know, not really. Which caused the increase of dry land? Nah. The movement of the continents formed large areas of dry, arid, arid means dry, dry, arid land, which increased the amount of swamps. So if the air is dry, it's not going to be swampy. Swampy is like all humid and watery. The area where the swampy coastlands were located moved farther from the equator, causing temperature to decrease. Let's see. Swampy seas, swampy coastlands, the light blue. So it seems like that is not substantially different in the two. 
So, so far, it seems like I like number one. The swampy coastline decreased because the amount of shallow coastal seas decreased. Listen, I, I don't like this question. I think the map is terrible. I, honestly, the only thing that led me to get that was the fact that this name is different, which is means it's a bad map. So I would say maybe that's a 4 out of 10, but bad map. I don't like it. All right, number four. How does this change in the position of the continents create feedback resulting in the change in the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere during the Permian period? So we need to pretty much say we need to reverse the loop that we created up here. So we don't want there to be a lots of oxygen. So we need to get rid of some plants, get rid of some rainforests, decrease the temperature, stuff like that. So let's see if we can deal with that. How does this change the position of the continent create feedback resulting in the change in the amount of oxygen? Okay, so we could say if the continent, if we'll say if the area is not humid enough for high amounts of plant growth, less oxygen would be produced, causing insects to not grow as big. That's what you want to say. How does the change in auction? Because it's saying, use evidence from graph one and image four. So image four, yeah, it's saying that in the Permian time period here, you could see the oxygen level started to rapidly decrease. So there's your proof that it was going down. And then you sort of had to, like, word that. So I, I would say, honestly, this is kind of hard. Because a lot of students will have trouble wording that, honestly. Even if they have an idea of what the answer might be. Just getting that into words could be hard. Okay. Number five. Describe the evidence that supports this claim. Scientists claim that the size of the insects decreased during the Permian period, due in part to the oxygen available to them. Examine the data in Table 2. We have to use examples from Table 2 to support that claim. So, okay, so we'll say, look, atmospheric oxygen levels decreased, and then insect size decreased. That's so easy. So, we'll just say, it says use specific data. In... Carboniferous O2 levels were 35% and insect size was 10 to 30 inches. In Permian, O2% dropped to 15%. And insect size dropped to one to two inches. So that was so easy. So one out of ten. Uh, literally, if you could read the chart, you're going to get that right. All right, one more. A lot of reading. Let's go down. Okay, we kind of already read this before. I just want to reread it. How does this argument contribute to the explanation of the continual coevolution? Coevolution just means that two different species are changing at the same time. So, for example, in our example throughout this whole cluster, it was like the more plants there are, the increase in size of the insects. That's coevolution, right? Because the more plants, then the size of the insects was, was changing based on the amount of plants. So it says, some scientists claim that the decline in oxygen alone wasn't the only thing to contribute to the decline in size and index. They argue that during the Permian, reptiles may have increasingly preyed upon them. So they're saying that there was predators killing them as well. When oxygen levels declined, the insects didn't immediately shrink. The large insects became sluggish 
because they couldn't produce the amount of energy they needed. So now they're saying less O2, less, uh, like, good, I want to say less good big insects like the insects couldn't defend themselves because the oxygen level was lower as vertebrates evolved to become more effective predators this would have placed additional pressure on large insects which might have been more vulnerable due to their size and slower escape responses resulting in the larger insects not being able to reproduce okay how does this argument contribute to the explanation of continual co-evolution of the systems and life on earth okay let's just answer that first so we got to say, like, since O2 levels decreased, large insects became slower and sluggish. So other predators were able to better hunt them so that that covers this how does the argument contribute to the explanation of the continual co-evolution of earth systems and life on earth so that's that does because the earth system is the oxygen levels are decreasing and then the life on earth we got what ideas doesn't this argument present that would explain the presence of small insects today what ideas doesn't this argument present? So this argument doesn't present the whole thing that we talked about in the cluster with the continent shifting, causing the oxygen levels to decrease. So this argument does not talk about plate tectonics having a role in O2 levels causing the insects to shrink over time. That would be how I would do that. So this is a very biology question. I would say that this sort of cluster will probably not be on the, the actual test but i mean this stuff might but when it starts to get into really biology stuff like evolution natural selection things like that that's all bio clusters so i would say you know it's like i said it's good practice so we'll keep doing more cluster questions here that was this one so i hope it helped good luck studying and i will catch you on the next one